Hey gamers, what's going on? Shaw here, and today we are jumping into the upper echelon of Tazavash to take on the infamous leader of the cartel, Soleil. In patch 9.2, Soleil is the third and final boss of the Soleil's Gambit instance and has two phases to the encounter. In this video, we're going to be going over some of her mechanics, positioning, and the general strategy to hopefully provide some insight in how to defeat this foe with ease and consistency. Quick disclaimer though, the strategy I discuss is not going to be perfect and is subject to change over the course of the tier, or it's going to be dependent on your group composition. Also keep in mind that I'm an idiot. So with that out of the way, let's dive into the breakdown. This boss comes in two parts, two phases, and her mechanics are going to change slightly between them. The first phase of the encounter is extremely easy, so I recommend holding your lust or hero until phase two goes underway. Hyperlight Spark is one of her mechanics will just do, which will do moderate group damage, and she will also periodically summon two assassins who need to be pretty much focused down. They will occasionally port about 20 yards away and cast Shuriken Blitz, which will result in a massive amount of group damage if they're not kicked or CC'd. Lastly, Soleil spawns a collapsing star, which lasts for 30 seconds. This needs to be soaked four times, and each time it is soaked, it will knock the player who soaks back and apply a three second debuff, which will cause moderate damage over time. Typically, the healer should be in charge of soaking this, but it can be decided by the group before pulling the boss. Once Soleil hits 40% health, she will port to the center of the room and spawn five star-shaped relics. During this time, the boss will be taking 99% reduced damage, so your group should split up, each taking one relic for themselves, and then during this part of the fight, you will be introduced to a new mechanic called Hyperlight Jolt, which causes a blast of energy to jump through each player. Your party needs to use this mechanic to shatter the relics in order to continue to do damage to the boss. Once this occurs, there will be three more mechanics your group needs to manage. Similar to phase one, the boss will continue to spawn a collapsing star, which should be handled in the same way, though it will be a little bit tighter because of overlaps. The two new mechanics include energy fragmentation, which will cause a relic to explode, sending out spikes of cosmic energy that will damage and apply a dot to any player that is hit. The other mechanic is going to be Hyperlight Nova, which causes the relics to detonate, doing fatal um, a fatal amount of damage. All right, with those mechanics out of the way, let's talk strategy. All right, we are going to talk theoretical strategy for this fight first. Uh, ignore my cat form. I had to do this on a Mythic Zero uh, to get here just to kind of have footage of the boss room in general so I can talk about this. So just ignore the fact that I'm just a stealth kitty right here. I'll point it out for you. Um, so there's two phases of this fight, as I've mentioned, and the positioning honestly doesn't matter, or it's whatever your group feels comfortable with. Phase one positioning, I recommend always tanking near the collapsing star once it spawns. I'm going to go over this in an actual gameplay footage review in a couple minutes, but I want to just talk about exactly where you want to position and why you want to position there. So I normally will start the boss right where Soleil is pretty much standing. Uh, the reason for this is because... It gives your DPS players who have AoEs, things like uh, Frozen Orb, for example, things like Death and Decay, are just some things to come to mind. Like Reign of Fire, if uh, Destralox casts that for some reason in like more of a single target encounter. But to be fair, there are relics and there are adds at the start of the fight. So right when you pull, you're getting the Ur, Woe, and Vi relic. Typically, you'll focus Ur. That's the one that I recommend to f focusing because it's going to give you cooldowns back faster for the second phase. It's going to give you CC abilities and kicks back faster for the uh, Shuriken Blitz later on in the fight. So tanking her here on pull is probably your best bet. Do not lust on pull though, because the phase two is much harder and you actually have to bring her from 100% to zero. So the first phase, it's 100% to 40, 40% she phases, she heals all the way back up to 100, and then you have to get her all the way back down to zero. Shortly into the fight, you're actually going to see a couple adds come in. So the boss is going to be positioned right here. Adds are going to spawn on either side. They spawn on her left and right from what I've like kind of gathered visually whenever I'm taking this fight. So if you're positioning her a weird way, you can force them to spawn in other locations. It doesn't really matter because they'll essentially run into melee anyways. The only thing you want to be careful of is if ranged players are standing out here. Let's say you have like your, let's just say this is a warlock and a mage. Uh, so that's the W for Warlock Mages out here. That's not an M. There we go. And let's just say they're just ripping damage. Uh, they have CDs popped. You have to be careful on the adds because if, like, there's AoEs or shit hitting them, they're going to start to run out towards the range players because they have threat. Just make sure you're taunting them. Make sure you as a tank are ready to taunt, getting ready to kind of ramp up some bigger damage hits just so your DPS don't rip because you want to keep them stacked efficiently. 
ads are pretty much a they they aren't a priority but they want to you want them to die a couple seconds after they spawn they're actually going to teleport out typically it's in the direction of where players um like aren't standing so they kind of teleport away from people and they do a, a cast called shuriken blitz you need to kick this uh kick it or stun it or cc it or whatever you can to stop the cast because if it gets off you're probably going to wipe especially when you get to a very like higher end of keys where these abilities are basically deadly outside of that that's pretty much it and then um, let's just say the boss is still right here, and she's going to spawn a collapsing star, which will just be a giant circle. Um, what I normally do as a tank player is I will drag Soleil right up next to the um, the collapsing star, because a healer, let's just say you have a, I don't know, a holy priest chilling out here. This is the holy priest. They have to run into this to pop the collapsing star to get it to detonate, because if you don't do this, uh, and you don't minimize uh, the collapsing star down to basically nothing, uh, it's going to just erupt all at once and blow up your entire group, which would be bad. The first collapsing star, you can pop it uh, pretty much back to back as long as you have the herb buff up. Once you have the herb buff on you, you're being healed for a percentage of your max health, which means you're probably safe to take two stacks. Now, of course, at the very, very high end level, if the dot is actually doing enough to kill you at two stacks, don't. Or have healing CDs rolling, of course. Um... This is typically a healer's job, though uh, if a healer and like you guys are in Discord, you can always communicate. Sometimes I as a tank player will stand in it, sometimes my healer will soak some, sometimes a DPS will step in if the healer needs it because they're planting. Some healers can't heal like on the move as much as others, so sometimes having a DPS who's mobile, like a Beast Mastery Hunter for example, is a pretty efficient choice to do this. But that's pretty much phase one, so you're going to get adds spawning that need to be kicked, and you have to soak the Collapsing Star. Uh, not much to it, and then um, you're going to enter phase two. So phase two, Soleil is going to teleport right to the center of the, the room, uh, and she's going to spawn relics. Pretty much at this time, yeah, she's still taking damage, but you're never going to kill her, uh, and she's going to heal the full anyway. So there's no reason to stand there trying to attack unless you're building resources for something, unless you're trying to generate runic power, generate rage, generate whatever that might be. But what I recommend doing is there's going to be relics spawning. So we're going to like draw a couple stars. I think I'm not good at using a mouse, despite me being a video game player. Uh, and let's just say there's these five relics. I recommend to DPS split off immediately if you don't need to generate. Typically as a tank player, I'm going to just go and I'm going to just pick a star and I'm going to stand there because I don't really need to generate anything. I'm typically going to be sitting at rage cap anyways, writing, waiting for an iron fur. Um, so I'm going to run out to one of the relics and you're going to stand there. And I recommend DPS, if they can, or healers, move to a relic sooner rather than later. Because if you try to do it last second, um, one, your DPS and shit's inefficient, so there's no point in waiting. Uh, two, if there's any confusion, you're just going to end up taking more damage, which will possibly lead to a raid wipe, especially on high, or a group wipe, especially on high tyrannical weeks. So, move out right away. Once that happens, so you have these, these relics that are hanging out around the room. And there's going to be a hyperlight jolt that's going to jolt from each player. Now, best thing to do is just stand inside of the relic. There's a little, little circle on the ground that doesn't do anything. Just make sure you're inside of it. Or make sure that your red line is going between you and your relic. And then that person who it's going towards needs to be in charge that that red line is going through their relic and then towards another player. So changing this to blue, let's just say the hyperlight jolt will jump across to here. And then down and then up across and then to this guy right so that's how you would want to break it now this is obviously like it's rng who would who's connected to who it's you know random kind of on these relics but the thing to be careful here is this line going straight across if you get clipped by a light uh like the jolt again you're going to take an additional stack additional damage and they have like it's just going to hurt and it can possibly kill you so make sure you're not in between lines that's like the biggest thing i can say i've seen people wipe to it because there is a chance there's three in a line like this, just like th like these three are in a line. If the middle player is standing in the relic and it's going across, they're probably gonna die. So you just kind of want to make sure you're shifting properly, or shifting back, just making sure your red line is going through the relic. You don't have to be inside of it, but if you are, make sure you're not getting hit by anything else. After that, it's gonna be pretty simple. So the only thing that's gonna stay from phase one is going to be the collapsing star which needs to be soaked now the the tricky part is which i'll go over in the footage in a second and i'll show you how to deal with some of them is that there's now going to be giant explosions on the ground that you have to dodge 
At the same time, you have to pop the Clutching Star, which causes you to knock back, and you also have to deal with en energy fragmentation. So let's just say this is the relic here, this pink dot, and let's say this green dot is the boss in phase two. So in phase two, I typically will, s I, I recommend staying in the middle. Now I know tanks like to try to argue like pulling way off to like the right hand side of the room or the left hand side makes it easier to dodge the fragments. I typically beg to differ only, and here's why before you go disagreeing with me in the comments is because either way you have to dodge the energy fragmentations that are coming at you. Um, so from, from this relic here, uh, you know, when, when the boss explodes it, they're going to shoot out in like all directions like this, right? And you have to not get hit by them. Uh, typically when you're on the edge room, yes, you're further away and you might have some more time to react to the fragmentation, but you still have to move from it. You still have to dodge it. Now, because you're on the edge of the room, you have actually less space to maneuver around. And the collapsing star will typically spawn in more towards the center of the room. So your healer has to run further away which means then your group isn't stacked as much, um, which sta if you had to pick between non-stacked healing and stacked healing, stacked healing is typically gonna be way more efficient um, for almost all classes, whether it's Holy Words, whether it's like the Eflo plus Wild Growth hitting, um, like Light of Dawn, like basically every healer has a handful of abilities that's a sizable part of their throughput that is actually gonna keep the group alive if you're stacked. So where you tank the boss in phase two, I recommend in the middle, but of course people are going to disagree and say you should tank it on the edge or in a certain corner. I found it easiest just to stay in the middle and focus on dodging because you're stacked, you're able to pop collapsing your collapsing stars more efficiently. Um, and then the boss position is always static, which means that DPS can reliably, reliably place down their AOE abilities, whether it's Kyrian Spear, whether it's like your Blizzard slash Frozen Orbs, um, any of those type of abilities can be consistently placed at the center knowing that the boss isn't going to be ran out of it so that's mainly the argument i can keep drawing pictures but honestly drawing pictures over and over again is going to make me lose my lose my fucking mind so we're going to jump into an actual footage breakdown of a run this kill it's not perfect um but it is from actually my last commentary that i did or one of my last commentaries that i did which was the gambit run uh which was really really clean we had, I think, like a few deaths on the last boss just because our Demon Hunter got really, really unlucky. But I want to kind of walk through the mechanics of that. So let's actually jump into a kind of an analysis. All right, so here we are. This is a 21 Fortified. So the boss mechanics aren't going to seem as dangerous here because it's not Tyrannical Weeks. Um, I was shifting through some of my footage and I just couldn't find like a good Tyrannical, like cleanly executed fight. This is one of the better ones, but the mechanics are going to stay the same. Just treat them as if they're going to one-shot you. Um, obviously, it also depends on key level, depends on gear. Um, there's a lot of things you have to kind of keep in mind. So again, this is from a fortified bolstering quaking week. So we have a handful of different affixes to worry about, where sometimes the fight can be easier or harder depending on the affixes. So with that out of the way, let's jump in. So again, we are running uh, we are running two melee, two range, counting obviously, of course, the healer, and then um, I'm obviously on my guardian druid. So Let's kind of walk through exactly what's going on here. I'm going to be pausing and stuff like that, so just bear with me. <laughs> it's a bear pun. So again, like I said before, on pull, we are basically starting right here. We're popping some of our bigger cooldowns, and we're just trying to kill Ur Relic um, pretty much as fast as possible. About five seconds, seven seconds into the fight, the assassins are going to spawn. They're going to come in from the side. We do have incarnation rolling, so we're ready to kind of grab, uh, get aggro. We put down a Nursal's Vortex, and they're going to get gripped in immediately. So that's the one thing that I can't really show you in this video is they get they port out like this again away from players the, the casters are in the uh, back down here. They're going to cast the shuriken blitz but again because we have Ursals down uh, Kyrian spear also works for this they're going to get gripped immediately back in which is going to interrupt their cast um, and keep them nice and stacked for extra damage. So really really good and of course just watch the Urslam as melee players as a tank player just don't get hit by this it's a lot of damage uh, of course in a higher key it can one shot uh, melee players the tank getting stunned just not a good idea uh and we're gonna keep going so the ur relic is going to die and then here is that collapsing star like i said the healer is going to run in once i'm going to run in twice this is going to put us at our two stack um but the reason we do that is because we also have ur so ur is going to carry a lot of the healing here as you can see it's keeping us really healthy now this isn't an excuse to not heal at all i think the healer should be still healing I haven't healed this fight myself, but again, the rest of the druid did a great job at handling that. Um, 
where is he at so he's here he's running in for the third time which is good he's making sure he's applying his hots getting us topped off and then he's going to run in and apply that last dot to us after that you have a little bit of quiet you're going to get this hyperlight spark again it's just kind of very very low amount of like just group damage typically hots are like class self-healing will keep it up and this is what i was talking about on the other side so i'm facing the boss it's facing at me obviously i'm facing against this wall and they're spawning on the left and right side so again there's probably a way to cheese this by like tanking her up against the wall i haven't played with it i don't think it's efficient um just make sure you're getting threat i'm taunting one i'm targeting the other and making sure that i'm keeping them um a good damage profile on them and maintain threat ursals go down kyrian spear goes down they're getting gripped right back in boss hits 40 percent and while that you can keep doing damage to her there is no reason to uh the only reason again is to generate you want to make sure you're getting rage um you want to make sure maybe maybe keeping like sinful brand applied of course for the vengeance demon or the the havoc demon hunter like there's reasons to keep hitting her but if you can figure out a way not to or like if you can afford not to hit her for a few seconds just to find a relic and make sure you're good that is going to be the best case scenario so i'm going to commit to this corner now the biggest suggestion I would ever like have for any player is if you're running with a group, be consistent with where you go. Even in pugs, if you're the tank and you go to this corner, as long as there's a relic in this corner of the room, um, which is like north northeast, directions are hard. Go to that corner unless there's no relic there, of course. Then you obviously need to shift somewhere else. But that's another bear pun for you. Um, and I'm just kind of sitting here. I'm sitting inside the relic. Uh, our demon hunter or our, is that mage mage is here i guess that's a mirror image i i guess so here is the sorry i'm like more curious on the mirror image bone boys than the actual fight so here are those here are those lines so i'm gonna pause it here so these lines will pulse out now if you are very very far if you're like across the room from someone you can see right here from the mage to the druid it kind of is faded sometimes if it's really stretched you won't actually be able to see where it's coming from you can kind of make like a guess right um but just be aware don't freak out because it's not connecting to you also it goes like player one two three four five or you know it goes it goes to five players once it's at the last player you won't be sending out another um uh, like another uh, red line so some players are like oh i don't see mine going to anyone else it's probably because you're the last or first in the order actually i think you would be last in the order in that case so just something to keep in mind when you're doing this fight so we're we're lining up again you can stand inside the relic that's probably the best case or you can make sure that the line is going through the relic either way works it doesn't matter just make sure that it's going through the line or the line is going through the relic so the hyperlight jolt goes off everyone just has one stack that's perfect and now we are keeping the boss in the middle and this is what i was talking about like consistency with like aoe abilities like the aflo is going to be here um you know things like healing rain uh aoe's like res arrow uh what's the other hunter one wild spirits um like frozen orb can be sent here like no dps knowing how consistent the boss placement is going to be is actually going to yield higher dps for your group um i would like to hear someone argue otherwise but again like if i was to pull him into the corner it's more movement we still have to dodge fragments he's still going to port back it's more of a distance that players have to travel to get to the relics um later on in the fight when we have to do the the, the hyperlight jolts again just the the consistency i think is way more valuable than like the little bit of maybe better positioning to dodge like energy frags which is only one of the several mechanics in this phase so here comes the energy frag this is going to be probably the scariest mechanic for a lot of players because again some players just can't visually put together where the lines are going to um or not lines but like the uh, spikes and maintaining dps so people try to panic people try to either keep their uptime or continue casting but honestly not dying is gonna be higher damage than being dead you can't do damage when you're dead fun fact so he does this energy frag right now he is going to face a relic so it's telegraphed you just have to look at where his face mask or her face mask is facing it's this very far corner relic and then after that the order that it's going to jump to is fairly rng i've never seen it jump maybe i have maybe i've if you can confirm it let me know but it'll never jump all the way across to the opposite side it'll always kind of jump to a nearby relic i don't know if it's like the closest relic to it or what but you could be fairly consistent that it's going to be the either side instead of all the way across the room so what i do here is i face the relic that where that's going to blow up 
And then I just make sure that I am just kind of strafing left and right, depending on where the spikes are. What I found to be really efficient is if you just keep going in a circle. I didn't do it here. I kind of just stutter stepped back and forth. But um, if you're always moving, it's very easy to dodge these. Um, again, I don't think uptime is that important if you can stay alive here. Getting hit by it is actually going to result probably in death. And then pretty easy. So right after the energy fragmentation, she typically will cast the uh, relocate, which shifts the orbs around, or, or the relics. So you have to kind of pay attention to how they're positioned now. There's a couple of different patterns. Um, sometimes it's three on one side and two on the other. Sometimes it's in a circle like this. And sometimes there's one that's like really, really close. And then it makes like this weird kind of like, um, almost like a star shape, I guess. But paying attention to where they're at and having like where you're going to go in mind is a big key to the success in this fight. The collapsing star is going to come out. This first collapsing star will always overlap with the hyper light Nova, which makes all of the relics explode. And it also makes the boss explode. Getting caught in this is pretty much a death sentence. What I like to do is soak the very first collapsing star right away before the like as this comes out and then reposition. You need to be careful because if you get knocked into a weird spot, like if the boss is a little bit further over here and this was an overlap and I got knocked and like I couldn't get out, I'll probably die. So I'm able to shift over pretty quickly. And then after that, it's almost on the healer to just finish popping them. So rest of the druid pops one, waits for the dot to fall off, ramping their hots, pops second. Now, an option you can do is you can let the last one expire, but it's not required, or you can just pop it yourself. So energy fragmentation is coming out. We're getting into position to dodge. We see that it's coming to this one. So I'm shifting the boss over a little bit, and now I'm just kind of like constantly just looking at whichever relic is about to spawn so I know which way I can move. It's a little bit easier for a tank than a DPS player. Ports to the center. The boss is not going to be dam dam uh, damageable immune to damage the boss can't take damage pretty much when she ports the center so just focus on getting to a relic so this is the one that i was talking about the player in the center here has to be careful if there's a line going through not to get clipped by the hyperlight jolt now this is the mistake that we make so do not do this is there was an inconsistency with how the relics were the first time and the second time so both of our dps were on this side our demon hunter and our mage our Resident was originally in this corner, and our Warrior, I think, was in the far back corner, opposite side of me. But because there used to be two relics over here, the Mage and the Demon Hunter did not communicate who needed to come to this one. So what ends up happening is they both go here, which is bad, and then they both try to blink over, and in, this, uh, in the chaos, our Demon Hunter actually got hit by two beams. So you get hit by your own, guaranteed, and then if one clips through you, you get hit by a second beam, which is... Nah, no bueno. So if this happens, you need to make sure that this demon hunter being stacked here is he's going to die. <laughs> uh, spoilers. So we want to make sure for some reason this relic got missed too. I don't know why I couldn't see this. Uh, I couldn't see our warrior over here. Um, so we need to make sure that we're hitting all three of these again. But the reason why this is dangerous is because the first this stack of hyperlight jolt that you have on you. Every time you have a stack, it makes you take increased damage. So the Demon Hunter having two stacks already is really, really bad for him. Uh, but I think then he gets clipped twice here, and he gets hit to four stacks, which kills him. And we pop all the relics, so we're we're good. We're going to get a battle res on the Demon Hunter. I think he takes this and then dies immediately in a second to the Energy Fragmentation. Or the Hyperlight Nova, maybe? I think it's actually the Energy Frag. So uh, coming out of the second one, it's going to be Nova right away. Followed by this, it's going to be... Um, an energy fragmentation, which you just means you need to make sure you're dodging them, um, and a collapsing star at the same exact time. So collapsing star, this one you have to be careful of because you don't want to get knocked back into the spikes that are coming out. So if you can, you try to pop one immediately just so you don't have to deal with it. That was a good counter with this the skull bash there. And then you want to just make sure you're dodging. Our warrior and our demon hunter both got hit. You can see them getting absolutely fucking murdered. And then our demon hunter once again perishes it perishes to the just the kind of the damage of the dot. We have two more collapsing stars to handle, but we have to focus on dodging the Nova first. The druid's gonna soak one. Again, we can let this last one. I think it did expire there actually. We were a little slow, so we went to two stacks. If you have a healing cooldown rolling, it's safe. Ports to the center, you know that the boss can't be damaged. Just find a relic. This time the mage stays on the right hand side, the demon hunter goes back to the original spot, we got it figured out, everything is connecting, 
very clean hyperlight jolt there and then i want to try to bring the boss back to the center for consistency there was a frozen orb down it disappeared and then last but not least you're going to go into kind of the similar rotation of energy frag and then similar to like the first part of the, the phase two is it's going to be frag um coll the collapsing star will happen during the hyperlight nova so it kind of alternates so it's like star plus the energy frag and star and nova they're always going to overlap in that last phase so you want to make sure you pop one right away do the mechanic pop two more and then handle the next mechanic while the last one could expire or you can pop it if you feel comfortable so that's the boss strat holy shit this is going to be a long video once again if you made it this far i hope this helps this boss is extremely painful in pugs um it's extremely painful when you're not in voice i found that being in voice you can somewhat communicate obviously like where you which corner you need to go to who's popping what cooldowns to use like shout darkness for example in this amz if you missed my full commentary um it is up in it i'll leave it in the uh, upper right hand corner of the screen there if you'd like to see the full run done on this week it was pretty clean we had like obviously four and a half minutes left only three deaths with two of them being on the last boss not too shabby and if you're interested in that route, you can find it in my Discord. Both of those will be linked below. I hope you guys, uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you're staying happy, healthy, and I will catch you all in the next one. Take care.